After the Second World War, cities were left in ruin and millions of people had nowhere to live. Various regions had different solutions, like the Homes for All policy in the UK or the building of so-called Stalinka, later Khrushchevka and even later Brezhnevka apartments in the former Eastern Bloc. The city of Prague, Czech Republic also wasn't spared of the sheer amount of destruction during the war. Housing was in short supply and many people had nowhere to live. Political parties used this fact to great effect in post-war elections, such as the Communist Party of Czechoslovakia in the 1946 elections. After the Communists won in 1946 and subsequently seized all power in 1948, their grand plans were set in motion. First of all, so-called Siedliště housing estates were built in places like Pankrats. However, with the growing population in the 60s and 70s and people moving to the big city, the need for more housing was growing more apparent. In the late 60s, the government decided on a plan. They would bulldoze the majority of southeastern Prague's original development and build the biggest Soviet-style housing estate in the country. And so, Yizhny Mesto was born. In this video, we'll take a look at Yizhny Mesto, how it was built, what it represents and how it looks like today. Before the video starts, please consider subscribing. It's free and it helps out a ton. Thanks and on to the video. Yizhny Mesto lies in the southeast of Prague, covering the districts of Chodov and Haye. Before the 1960s, these districts were independent villages and towns, completely separate from the city. In the mid-60s, plans were drawn up for a new, massive housing estate to house Prague's growing population. In the end, it was decided that this massive development would be located in the aforementioned villages and towns. In 1968, Chodov and Haye were officially annexed by the city, setting the stage for the construction of Yizhny Mesto. Just three years later, in 1971, the construction of the largest housing estate in the city began. First, the area had to be cleared of any fields and previous developments. Unfortunately, this meant that the majority of old Chodov and Haye were demolished. After that was done, construction of the apartment blocks themselves started in 1973. Unfortunately, the aesthetics of the place left a lot to be desired. The first development, creatively named Yizhny Mesto 1, consisted of grey, concrete, usually over 10-storey high Brezhnevka apartment blocks. Yizhny Mesto 1 was constructed fairly quickly and in 1976, the first people moved in. At this time, the housing estate was barely completed and the people basically lived in a giant construction site. The Czechoslovak movie named Panel Story a Nepiexerudní sídliště described the living situation of the first residents well. Sadly, I can't show footage from the movie here due to copyright reasons, but I definitely recommend checking it out if you have the time. The link is in the description. However, the plans were bigger than just Jižní město 1. Two years later, in 1978, the construction of the second part of Jižní město, creatively named Jižní město 2, started. Parallel to the construction of Yizhny Mesto 2, the C metro line was being expanded, adding the stations of Primátora Vacka, Budovatelů, Družby and Kosmonautů. The line extension was opened on the 7th of November 1980, on the anniversary of the October Revolution in the USSR. These station names were clearly inspired by communism and communist symbols, which was unacceptable after the 1989 revolution. In 1990, the names were changed to Rostily, Chodov, Opatov and Haye. Even though the Haye station dropped its astronaut-themed naming, lots of streets are still named after space and astronauts, such as Kosmická or Náměstí Kosmonautů. Back to Jižní město 2. It was supposed to be larger than it is now, but construction was halted after the aforementioned 1989 revolution, stopping the development in its tracks. Today's Yizhny Mesto is very different from the grey, depressing landscape that it was 30 years ago. To get a proper feel for the district today, I think a little trip is in order.
coming out of the Haie metro station, the communist architecture is striking. Loads of tall, colorful blocks surround the station, combined with a typical pre-1989 shopping area. If all the modern western brands weren't present, I think this area could reasonably pass as a set for a communist era movie. However, the area isn't as grey and colorless as it was in the past. The blocks were insulated, dramatically raising their energy efficiency, parks were established and developed, and there is generally more life present. One thing that really stands out is the amount of cars in this place. Street parking is absolutely everywhere, and relatively large parking lots are also quite frequent. Even though cars are almost everywhere, the public transport connections are quite good. There's the C Metro line, serving as the main link between Nizhny Mesto and the wider city, and there are numerous bus lines either feeding into the metro or going to other places altogether. People need places to live, but they also need places to shop. Let's look at shopping areas in Nizhny Mesto now. Following Soviet-style development practices, most apartment buildings are pretty close to small shops, supermarkets, etc. So-called mikrorayoni or micro-districts are present in Nizhny Mesto, with apartment buildings wrapping around the central park, with either playgrounds or important services such as schools in the middle. The great city planning YouTuber City Beautiful made a video about Soviet-style urban planning, micro-districts and such. I definitely recommend checking him out, the link is in the description. Combined with the micro-district stores, shopping areas also sprung up around public transport stations, especially along arterial routes and stations, like metro stations. However, after the fall of communism, larger, more centralized shopping areas started to be built. For an example of that in Nizhny Mesto, we will need to take a short metro ride from Haie. This is Chodov, home to one of the largest shopping malls in the Czech Republic. The mall, called Westfield Chodov, is truly a cathedral of consumption, with three floors dedicated exclusively to shopping. The mall has six floors in total, with the three extra non-shopping floors being allocated to office space and to car parking. Loads of parking, like multiple floors and a full separate parking garage. Although, to be completely fair to Westfield Chodov, some of the parking is actively utilized as a park and ride for the C Metro line, which is definitely commendable. Westfield Chodov is a post-1989 development, being opened in 2005, with an expansion being opened in 2017. Alongside the gigantic mall, there are more shopping centers in the area, such as Lidl and Tesco supermarkets, a Mironet electronics store, and more. I have to say, the Lidl is one of the worst looking Lidls I've ever seen and been to. The building stands in stark contrast to the modern buildings being built in Chodov. It looks straight out of the 1980s. The inside isn't exactly great either. Apart from the Lidl, the ground floor is completely empty and hollow, giving off a sort of dead mall vibe. Chodov isn't exclusively a shopping district, there are loads of apartment blocks as well, but it's definitely more shopping oriented than Haie. The district is also quite unique in a way. It's cut in half by the infamous D1 highway running right in the middle. In an interesting phenomenon, the western half of Chodov is mostly populated by Soviet-style apartment blocks, whereas the eastern half is dominated by single-family homes. In general, Yizhny Mesto is an icon of communist-era Prague. Now, let's look at the impact and legacy of this district. Yizhny Mesto has left a diverse legacy on the city and its populace. For some, it's a positive symbol of Czechoslovak culture in the 70s and 80s. This manifests itself in pop culture, such as in the song Jižák by the rap group Peneři Stříčka Homeboye. For others, it's a symbol of communist oppression. Many people were coerced to relocate to Yizhny Mesto and other housing estates after getting their decades to centuries old houses blown up for the government's projects. For example, some citizens of the district of Zhishkov were forced to relocate to Yizhny Mesto due to the grand reconstruction plan of the whole district. I've made a video on this topic, so if this topic interests you, go check it out, link is in the description. 
the good people of Zhishkov weren't the only one forced to move. Many more people across the city got their houses demolished and were forced to move, such as my dad's family in the 80s. In conclusion, Yezhny Mesto is a staple of communist-era Prague. It successfully does its job of housing tens of thousands of people close to public transport, even though the methods used were sometimes less than ideal. For lots of people, me included, Yezhny Mesto is a nostalgic place, having either grown up there or having had family there. I personally think that it's not a bad district, and if the city takes care of it properly, it could definitely become even better. Anyways, thank you so much for watching to the end, you're a real legend. I've also launched a new way to support the channel. I've put a few links to the equipment I use for making these videos in the description. If you use these links, I will get a small commission from every purchase, so if you're looking for some new stuff, I'd greatly appreciate it if you used the links. Let me know what you think of the video, please leave a like and subscribe, enjoy the bloopers, this has been Tramley and I'll see you next time, bye! First of all, so-called Siedliste housing estates were built- uh, They would bulldoze the majority of southeastern Prague's the- uh, fuck's sake. Unfortunately, I can't show footage from the movie here due to copyright reasons, but I definitely recommend checking it out- Bruh. These station names were clearly inspired by communism and communist symbols, which was an The blocks were insulated, dramatically raising their energy efficiency, parks were established and developed, and there is general- In an interesting phenomenon, the- e